When I started learning web development about five years ago, people were already saying PHP is dying. PHP is not a good language to learn. Hey, you know, 2022 starting, people are still saying that, okay? Is PHP really dying? Is it really a bad language to learn? Listen, people have been saying PHP is dying for like 20 years. Every time it's fucking come back strong, okay? You know, PHP is kind of like World of Warcraft in a sense. It's the World of Warcraft of fucking programming languages. Like, World of Warcraft, since like 2010, people were saying, Oh, uh, is Guild Wars 2 going to be the game that kills World of Warcraft? Is like uh, Star Wars The Old Republic the game that's going to kill World of Warcraft? A couple of years later, hey, Elder Scrolls Online comes out. It's probably going to kill World of Warcraft. Hey, a couple of years later, New World comes out. It might kill World of Warcraft. Listen, World of Warcraft has been there for a long time. It's here for it to stay. It's still the most popular MMO. And it's the same thing for like uh, PHP. Like, hey, it's not perfect. It's not the best language ever, but it's still the most language used fucking ever. People are saying it's about to die. It, it doesn't fucking die. It's still a language that's used like on 70% of fucking websites. Like if that's your definition of a language that's dying, of a language that there's no jobs in, I don't understand your fucking definition. Okay, here's the thing. Even if people stop, like, using PHP right now, because, yeah, there's there's ban languages that have been used in the past that pretty much no one uses right now. But the thing is, there's still jobs for these developers because there's all these old websites that need to be updated. And I don't think ever, like, there's going to be no jobs for fucking PHP. Because think about it. 70% of websites right now, that's, like, 200 fucking million websites about about 240 uh, 40 million websites think about it that's not all of these websites are going to transition to other technologies and, and whatever they do there's going to be a lot of them that s still keep using php for a long time so there's still going to be a lot of jobs even if they're if for some reason no one keeps using php to create new websites and don't need web developers who create php websites there's still going to be a lot of jobs for php for maintenance and, and even then, I don't think it's really going to happen very soon that PHP is going to die. Because, hey, the reason most programming languages die is because, like, they stop being supported. And the thing is, PHP, it's getting a lot of support because, hey, first of all, it's free. People love it. It's the most popular language ever. It's the language that's the most used for, like, all, all the websites on the internet. It's one of the most supported languages right now. And, and and so, no, don't worry. PHP is not dying. People have been saying that for 20 years. It's still strong. Maybe someday it's going to be gone. But it's not close to be fucking dead. However, that said, that doesn't mean that you should learn it. But there's a lot of reasons why you might want to. And I'm going to share with you, if you're a beginner, why you might consider learning PHP. What are the reasons why you might be interested in that? First of all, when you work in an agency, like most of the clients they're probably going to get are people who need WordPress sites or who have WordPress sites and want them to be updated. And the thing is, if you don't know PHP, you're very limited in what you can do in WordPress because WordPress runs on PHP. I know it because when I started working as a web developer, my first job, I didn't know WordPress. I didn't know PHP. I just had like HTML, CSS, and JS. A lot of people are like, how do you get that job with just HTML, CSS, and JS. And listen, guys, you have to understand getting a job is not just about what's on your resume. It's also about how good you are in an interview. And uh, if you want to know tips about how to score interviews like really well, you can ask me in the comments. The thing is, P I didn't know PHP. I didn't know WordPress. All I had was CSS, uh, HTML, and JS. Okay, I started working on my client's uh, WordPress sites, and I was like, oh my god, how do I customize this footer? I don't know how to do it. How do I modify this part? You know, I, I, just doing some simple modifications uh, with HTML, CSS was tough. I, I had a lot of trouble finding where the elements were in the, the site's uh, folder architecture and all that thing. It was a fucking nightmare. And at one point, I thought, hey, okay, I'm going to learn WordPress. So I learned how to use a WordPress dashboard. I, I got a Udemy course on that. And still, because I didn't learn PHP, I, I knew how WordPress worked. I knew how to use a dashboard, how to m modify things in WordPress by using WordPress, but I couldn't modify everything on the theme because I didn't know PHP. And if you want to be able to do pretty much anything you want when you're working on WordPress sites and be able to pretty much do any modification that your clients 
might want from you. Uh, learning PHP is probably the best thing you could do. If you're really good with PHP and WordPress, you're going to become a really good asset for a company that needs to work on WordPress sites. If you don't want to work on them and you want to work with your own clients, uh, learning PHP, if you only know like HTML, CSS, JS is also going to sh get you to become able to make dynamic pages. You know, on Facebook, like you're refreshing and every time they're going to give you different posts on your feed. Well, if you want to be able to have a website that changes its content dynamically, you will want to learn a language like PHP. And the really cool thing about PHP compared to other options out there is that PHP is very versatile. You can use it for pretty much anything. And also it's like very easy to learn. So it's one of the best options out there when it comes to backend programming languages. You know, simple things that I couldn't do when I started as a web developer. I couldn't like collect form data. Like I couldn't do forms. I couldn't do like, um, you know, these spots at the bottom of footers where they, where they say, give us an email, like uh, enter your name, your, your email, whatever, uh, press submit and, and it's going to send us a message. Like I couldn't do that. And with PHP, I could have done that. You can use PHP to make e-commerce sites. Um, and overall, like it's very versatile, pretty much all the different fucking projects that you might be asked to make, you could make with PHP. It might not be the best language to do them, but you could probably do everything with PHP. And if you care about costs and it's your own websites, your own projects, you know, uh, you want to make a web app or something that, you know, is hosted online uh, for you and your friends, like PHP hosting is cheaper than other hosting. And the reason PHP hosting is cheaper than other hosting is because PHP doesn't require a lot of hardware strength to be able to run. So people are able to make PHP servers with very like cheap and not very um, powerful computers. And that means the cost of creating a PHP server is very low. So people can sell PHP services for very cheap because it doesn't cost them a lot of money to, 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 to make them. And also what happens is that there's so many companies out there that, that are offering PHP hosting that there's a lot of fucking competition. So high competition means comp competitive pricing. And when the cost for offering uh, this service is very low, well, that means the prices that are competitive are going to be very low. So it's very cheap to find PHP hosting. And if you know PHP, like, great. And honestly, PHP is pretty cool, okay? It's pretty amazing, okay? But that doesn't mean that you should learn it, okay? There's a lot of reasons why you might want to, and that's what I've just showed you. But there's also reasons why you might not want to learn it. Before I go into these reasons, I just want to share with you a couple of really cool things I learned about PHP while doing research for this video, okay? First of all, I learned that what the name PHP means, okay? It's very interesting. Obviously, it's an acronym. It's like WOW for World of Warcraft, PHP. What, what, P, what, is, what does PHP mean? Actually, apparently, it means PHP. Uh, the P at the end means processor. The H is hypertext. And the P is PHP. So PHP is an acronym for PHP Hypertext Processor, which includes the acronym PHP, which stands for PHP Hypertext Processor, which includes the PHP, which, which is an acronym for PHP Hypertext Processor. That means there's a fucking like infinite loop in the name of this language. I think that's kind of funny and pretty, pretty amazing. But, but what's also really interesting is that at first, what it was called was not PHP for PHP Hyperdex Processor. It was PHP for Personal Homepage. Okay, Personal Homepage. So either it means PHP for PHP Hyperdex Processor, PHP Hyperdex Processor, or it means PHP for Personal Homepage. Or it's Personal Homepage Hyperdex Processor or PHP Hyperdex Processor for PHP Hyperdex Processor for Personal Home Page Hyperdex Processor. I don't know where you want to stop the fucking loop, but theoretically it could stop anywhere, okay? Does the loop stop after like seven fucking go arounds? I don't fucking know, okay? But I think that's really cool. And I don't know who your mom is, but I'm pretty sure the two sites that she uses the most on the internet run on PHP. 
Facebook, and Wikipedia, okay? I don't know, look, it's probably not the two sites that you use the most. You probably use YouTube a lot, and YouTube does not run on PHP anymore. At first it was, but it's been transitioned to Python, but still a lot of the biggest sites still use PHP, and I think that's really cool. And the last cool thing I want to share with you about PHP before I share with you why you might not want to learn it, okay, is that PHP, unlike client-side JavaScript or other or that or other technologies, all the calculations, the script is run on the server side, okay? So you're not receiving, like when you're on a website that's running on PHP, you're not receiving a PHP script and your computer runs the PHP script and gives you the result of it. No, the PHP script is run on the server, it's translated into a fully HTML format and you receive the HTML file. So you, 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 the, the, the PHP doesn't run on your computer. Your computer doesn't see the original script. You don't see the original script. All you see is the result of it. And so when you're looking at it um, in, in your browser, all, it, all you get is a fucking HTML file. So if you're wondering, like, why have you, like, sometimes used F12 to, like, analyze web pages? And you were like, what, what, what the fuck? What, what, where, where does this come from? And things like that. Like, it's probably because, you know, it was a fucking PHP site. And overall, like, PHP is cool and all, but I don't know about you, but why do you want to be a web developer, okay? For me, there's two reasons I wanted to be a developer. First of all, I wanted to make fucking video games, okay? And honestly, if I want to make video games, I wouldn't want to learn PHP. I'd be much better off, like, learning Game Maker or something. And the second reason I became a developer is because I wanted to make money. And here's the thing. Learning PHP is cool and all, but it's not the best way to make more money as a developer. You know, you can learn PHP if you want, but don't do it because you want to make more money. You know, PHP is cool. It's like learning piano. But, like, you don't do it because you want to make money. You do it because you want to fucking learn piano. If you want to get a PHP job, well, you know, you, you can learn PHP and get a job, but don't expect it to, it to pay that much. There's so many PHP developers out there, you know, the, the, the prices, you know, the per hour money that you make is not going to be that high. And so many jobs are getting outsourced to India, Pakistan, people who are willing to pay for, to work for so little money that, you know, the problem is PHP is one of those languages that's easy to learn. So there's a lot of these developers out there that are, that are competing with the same jobs you are. And so while PHP is cool and all, it's like coding for video games. It's cool, it's fun, but like you're not getting paid a lot. If you don't care what language that you're, you're coding in, you just love to code, you just want a, 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 a job easily, and you don't care about how much money you, you make, you just want a job easily, like uh, you sh you'd be better off learning JavaScript. You know, it's easier, it's more in demand right now. Just go fucking learn JavaScript. But personally, the reason I didn't learn PHP or didn't like focus on JavaScript is just because, hey, it's not where the money is. If you want to make money as a developer, you know, jobs are cool and all. Like, you meet a lot of cool people, but, you know, it, it, jobs pay bullshit. The thing is, I started, I, I got my first job, started working for some guy, and I quickly noticed, like, the thing is, I was lucky, okay? I started working for a guy who lost, like, his last business partner, like, he had lawsuits and shit. And the problem is he had no money, so he started back his company in his house. So we were working in his house. Like, I was in his kitchen. It was kind of funny. Like, his dog was coming to see me, like, every couple of minutes. Like, and he was, like, jumping on my on my legs. And, like, I was trying to work on my fucking laptop. And, fucking laptop. And, you know, it, it was kind of a fun place. But, but what happened is that because he had, like, no employees and he needed help to find contracts, he asked me to help him go meet clients. And so when I met clients for him, I saw his contracts that he wanted and proposals, and I saw how much money he was charging for my services. He was paying me $18 an hour, and he was charging $85 an hour for my time uh, to these clients. So for every hour that I worked, I was getting less than a quarter of what he was selling my time for to our clients who were buying websites for, for, from our company. I talked to a lot of my different friends who have jobs similar and you know, that, that's the same thing that happens. And what I figured out is, hey, why wouldn't I just go see these companies, these clients, and instead of like working for this guy, 
who pays me 18 to actually go see people who are giving him 85, why would I, wouldn't I just go see these people that give him $85 an hour and, you know, ask them to hire me specifically? And when I started doing that, you know, I, I realized it's actually something you can learn really easily. I learned it very easily. And actually, I started making 85 myself. You know, if you want to learn that, I can teach you that. That's exactly what I want to do with this YouTube channel. At first, I didn't want to do this. I didn't want to be a fucking YouTube celebrity. But when I learned that my boss was charging $85 an hour and I was just getting paid less than a quarter of that, I felt fucking, you know, taken advantage of. I felt that was bullshit. And when I just went and learned how to find my own clients and actually make $85 an hour, my whole life fucking changed. Uh, I have a good car now. I have a house. Like I used to live with my parents with no fucking money. And I know this helped me a lot. And I know this can help you a lot. If you want to learn this, you want to subscribe to my channel. I'm not teaching you like bullshit, like just calling people like cold call, like all these weird methods that you're just bothering people and like, and like they're, they're really uncomfortable to do and annoying. Like my, my method that I use is very simple. Like I just send a couple of emails to people that are, that are likely to be interested in that. Like I contact companies that, you know, have websites that, are, that probably need to be updated or that don't have websites and companies and, and, and among these companies, the only companies that I contact are con are companies that, you know, are, in industries and businesses that have a lot of money. So I'm contacting people who have money and pe and that are in situations where they need websites. So the likelihood that they say yes is very high. If you wanna learn how to do that, subscribe, you're gonna see it's very easy and you can check my next upcoming videos because I'm gonna share with you my process very soon. With that said, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you soon. Take care.